Welcome to Health Management Academy. In part one of the Resource Management Operations video, we'll be talking about the process for performing a discharge planning assessment. In the idle situation, the discharge planning process should be initiated in the medical provider office, particularly for those patients with a planned admission or an elective procedure. For the patient with an unplanned admission, however, the discharge planning process should be initiated at time of admission to the facility, typically beginning with the initial nursing assessment. To complete the discharge needs assessment, the resource manager or social worker should utilize a holistic approach and screen for potential needs in six areas, medical and physical needs, functional status, socio and economic needs, cognitive capabilities, emotional strengths, and support systems. Discharge needs are reassessed throughout the stay and the community provider referral process is initiated as the patient condition warrants. The process is completed when there has been coordination and implementation of services. This video will focus on strategies for implementing an effective discharge plan with a streamlined transition to an alternative level of care. Okay, thank you. Hi, Kim. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Kim, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about Mr. Smith. I'm going to start working on his discharge plans this morning. Mm -hmm. And I wondered if there was anything you could help me with. Okay, he was admitted last night with a possible stroke. He does have a history of coronary artery disease. He's on some medication for his high blood pressure. He lives alone. He was independent with his ADLs before he came in. And his son is in there, and he's a lot of support for him. Good. I can go in and talk to both of them now. I'll let you know how the uh, discharge plan goes. Okay. okay. Sounds good. See you later. See you. Bye. In order to make sure we develop a comprehensive discharge plan specific to the patient's needs, there are a variety of data sources that should be considered. These include, but are not limited to, patient and family interview, medical record documentation, demographic information, patient diagnosis and history, nursing rounds, daily interdisciplinary team meetings, and communication with community providers. You've already seen two in action. Let's watch as the resource manager completes her initial assessment. Hello, Mr. Smith. I'm Jackie. I'm your resource manager. I'm here to help you with discharge planning. We want to make sure your discharge plan is very smooth when you go home and that you're discharged to a very safe environment. Is this your son? Uh -huh. Hi, I'm Jackie. I'm going to be helping your dad with his discharge plans. Now, I noticed in his chart, in reviewing his chart, that he lives alone. Yes. Does he have any pets? Uh, no, no pets. I want to make sure that when you go home you have a safe environment and I'm worried about rugs and things that you might trip over because we certainly don't want you to fall. I, I, don't, I, I don't want to fall. No, that's why we want to make sure that you have a safe discharge. Now, right now, therapy says he needs a lot of assistance, like 24 hours a day. Are you going to be able to do that? Um, I work in law enforcement, so I wouldn't be able to be there 24-7. Um, me and my wife both work. We have two kids, so there's no way we could not work. So, I mean, we can check on him three or four times a week, though. Well, I think at the beginning, Mr. Smith, you're going to need someone a little more often in the house. So I'd like to talk to you about a nursing home rehab. I ain't going to no nursing home. Well, it would not be for a long time. It would just be for a short time. Just until you get your strength back, get some rehab, get some physical therapy, things like that. For, for rehab, so I wouldn't fall. So you wouldn't fall. That, that's what we don't want to happen, for you to fall and break a bone. Now, in this packet, I have a lot of pamphlets for you to look at. This is our uh, discharge pamphlet, and we have a resource list. We have a place that you can write questions down. Uh, we have a $4 prescription drug list that tells you where you can get your pharmacy. Also have a list of all the living uh, facilities that provide rehab, so you can look them over and choose the one you like, one that's close, so your son can visit you while you're doing your rehab. That would be good, right? Yeah. Okay, so all these things are in this packet. I want to leave it with you. I want you to look at it, and I will come back and we'll talk with you about what you have, what you have decided. Okay? Good Thank enough? you. It is always important to include family members and or educational partners in all phases of a discharge planning assessment. Based on the patient's condition, 
discharge plans can fall into three categories, basic, moderate, and complex. The basic discharge plan is routine for the patient that has no additional needs outside of routine prescriptions, routine follow-up, or written discharge instructions. The moderate discharge plan is indicated for the patient that has adequate independence and or social support to be discharged home with minimal intervention, or that may require home health, simple durable medical equipment, community resource information or referral, outpatient rehabilitation, or outpatient medical follow-up. The complex discharge plan is indicated for the indigent patient, the patient with long-term chronic needs, or the patient that may need inpatient rehabilitation, skilled nursing services, hospice, dialysis, high-cost drugs or biologicals, caregiver respite care, long-term acute care, adult home, medically complex home care, nursing home placement, consumer-directed programs, substance abuse, or behavioral health. So, based on these descriptions, which one do you think Mr. Smith is in? Let's see what, if any, progress is made when the team conducts Mr. Smith's assessment. Hi, Jackie. I need to follow up with you on Mr. Smith. He's picked his top three nursing facilities, and all of them have available beds. Therapy says he's doing much better, and Dr. Jones wants to send him home on two weeks of Flovenox. Do you think that the plans have changed? Well, let's look at the notes. Um, I know Mr. Smith was high risk when he came into the hospital, and I note that on Dr. Jones's continuum of care form, he has indicated that he is a rehab potential. I'll be going into the room to assess him later, and I can get the form signed when I'm in there. Okay. Well, I'll go ahead and arrange DME so that there won't be any delays. I'll also make sure that he has prescription coverage for Lovenox because it's so expensive. I can call Dr. Jones also to see if we can change the Lovenox to heparin, which will be a little more cost-effective for the Smith family. Okay. That sounds great. Thank you, Jackie. As you can see, a change in patient condition, in this case a great improvement, can and will affect a patient's discharge plan. Frequent reassessment is essential to formulating a comprehensive discharge plan. In review, the discharge planning process must be a holistic approach that screens for medical and physical needs, functional status, social and economic needs, cognitive abilities, emotional strengths, and support systems. An effective discharge plan will reduce readmissions and provide positive outcomes for the patient, family, physician, and facilities.